Well, I'm not presenting, so yeah. <laughs> you good? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. guys, good friend of mine, my colleague. I've known her for about two and a half years now. Uh, little thing how we met. Um, she's really buff, right? So <laughs> we were at an NCA, NSCA conference at Cal State Fullerton, and I was working full time at Cal State Dominguez, but being the person I am, I like a lot of things, so money, you have to have money to do that. So took a part time job at El Camino where she's the strength coach and I think her other title is fitness specialist. I have no idea. You'd have to ask her about that. Exercise specialist, is that what it's called? Exercise fitness specialist, which just oh. means I run the fitness center. That's a fancy <laughs> yeah, term for she, that. Yeah, she helps out people. But um, I went up to her and I was like, hey, can I help? You know, get out. And she was like, yeah. And then she ended up giving me a job. So I'm grateful for that too. So I got a little more pay. What the heck, dude? Man, you're just dropping the ball today. <laughs> like, you know. Jeannie's mad at you. You go to mad. <laughs> um, but that's just one of those things where, like, literally, I didn't know who she was. I went up to her and introduced myself. I got you. Um, and, you know, a friendship, a good friendship lasted from it, a lot lifelong, but also at the same time, I got a job from it. So it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, don't introduce yourself. She could have said no, right? But, you know, I look like a strength conditioning coach. Uh, uh -huh. I could have said, uh -huh. go away, I'm eating. <laughs> yeah, it's like, do you lift? Um, but yeah, so that's it. So give her respect. I don't know how long, it won't be crazy long, but there'll be questions, and then yeah, obviously any questions you have for her, so. And this will be up on YouTube, too, because so, some of my students couldn't make it, so she wanted to record it, too, for her own purposes, so. Um, Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> okay. Yes. Although, they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you, Coach. Yeah. So before I started, I actually wanted to just show a little video, kind of give you a little bit of insight on my day to day at El Camino College. Keep that chest forward, open up those hips on the way back. baseball, one of the teams that I work with. We do agility twice a week. They lift twice a week. Uh, four times. <laughs> so we do one day's change of direction, the other day's linear. So there's a different emphasis each day. This is them in the weight room. They have 6 a.m. weights, Monday through Thursday. How long is it? 6 a.m. to what? It's a class, so it's 6 a.m. to 7.25. Four days out of the week. Yeah. This was maxing day. This is Gamboa. <laughs> Anybody ever trained Vertimax before? <coughs> so we do contrast training where we do a sport specific movement, resist it, and you take it off, do some reps unresisted. You fly once you take the, uh, the pulleys off. The weight room is right behind. There's just not enough space, so we'll put the Vertimax wherever we can. This is softball, another team that I train. They live twice a week. They condition twice a week. This is some footage from testing, testing week. This is our best. She hit 240 or 245, I think. So I wanted to show this next part of the video just because it's not all about the highlights. We always kind of watch the best case scenario. We always show highlights in the videos, but... 
Sometimes it just doesn't happen, and that's okay. This is men's basketball. A very interesting bunch, as always. Men's basketball is yes. always pretty interesting to work with. We primarily do mobility work. So knee stability, ankle mobility, shoulder mobility, a little bit of lifting, but they're just, they're stiff. They, they've got kind of a lot of muscle imbalances. So we start every lift with some ankle and knee mobility. There you go. Tristan. 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 Okay, you know some of these guys. I know. Yeah. I know. And honestly, this is this was good for them. I didn't know if they were going to buy in, but they were actually pretty excited to, to be doing this type of stuff. It's helping them throughout the I mean, season so, so far. You don't want to shift those hips to try to get the range. You want to keep the hips square. There you go. So I've been able to minimize some ankle issues, some knee issues, some groin issues with some of the work that we've been doing. This is like a three three. It's like a, a three way touch, <laughs> trying to keep that. So it's dorsiflexion, trying to keep that heel down and get the knee to touch outside, straight ahead and to the right. We've seen Bale walks before, right? They loops. They love. Yeah, you gotta get lower. Even lower. There you go. Now you're loading. Now you can do it. Stay tight. Shoulder on hip, shoulder on hip, shoulder on hip, shoulder on hip. Softball again. This is some this is part of our Explosive phase, and I'll explain the type of program I put together for them. So again, sports specific movement with the Vertimax. They superset this with their squats. And that's it. So just a little bit of highlight. I work with some other teams, but just kind of wanted to show you a little bit of what my day to day is like. So I'm Coach Jones. Um, thank you all for allowing me to come here and speak to you today. This is going to be about strength and conditioning, which I call performance optimization. And we can kind of start with who I am. So strength coach, uh, my goal is to enhance performance and decrease the chance of injury. That's the, the, the most concise way I can kind of explain what I do for my teams. And you know, this is, I'll, I'll go over this and then I'll kind of, this is just a snapshot. This just kind of gives you a very, kind of general overview of who I am, but I kind of want to share my journey, because these are just words, but there is a story behind all these schools and a story behind how I got here today. But I'm, right now I'm at El Camino College, JC. Prior to that, U.S. Tennis Association for about a year. Was at Cal State Northridge as a, as a full-time assistant and got started off at UCLA. Um, but, let me, and then, okay, the why. Why do I do strength and conditioning? It's about movement. At the end of the day, it's about movement. Whether you're a student, a mom, an athlete, whatever, we're just not trying to, not necessarily not be in pain, but we're trying to move properly and minimize the stress in our bodies. So that's why the why to me is increasing stability, so spinal stability, pelvic stability, joint mobility, and muscle flexibility. And that way, whether we're picking up a pencil, whether we're lifting a box, if we know how to move properly and recruit the right muscles, then we're less inclined to injure ourselves and be in pain. And I don't care who you are, it's not just for athletes, that should be everybody's goal, just as a, as a person who can move. Now my story starts with me uh, basically going to college as somebody who danced for, from kindergarten, I'd say from three to 17, I was a dancer, I was on a, a competitive dance team. Um, stopped dancing my senior year in high school, played basketball since, gosh, I was in maybe fourth grade, played club ball, you know, varsity all four years, and went to college and didn't play basketball. And for me, that was huge because I think it was a tough decision. It was, I think, expected of me to play, but at the same time, my heart wasn't in it. And so uh, I ended up not playing basketball, but what I did end up doing was staying, I, I, I kind of had to figure out like, how am I gonna stay in shape? Before it was dance, before it was basketball, now I'm on my own. Nobody's telling me to get up, nobody, I don't have to go to practice. And I saw all my friends, like the homies coming back, putting on the freshman 15 and I was like, that's real. Like I could go to school and I was going to school in New Orleans where food is good, right? <laughs> and I could have come back just not in good shape. And so took it upon myself to work out. Um, it was an NAIA school, really small, no fitness center, no gym, nothing like that. So it was literally just <laughs> Tybo and just running up and down the campus to kind of stay in shape. But that sparked 
a fitness bug in me. Okay, I grew up with three older brothers. Fitness and just athletics and, and being active was always a part of my life. And so when I finished school, I graduated with a, with a bachelor's in psychology. Tried that, worked in a, a facility that was actually down the street from El Camino College right now, but it was a transitional living center where people came from mental health hospitals and came to this independent living center. We basically taught them skills, how to cook, how to shop, how to take care of themselves. It was the most, one of the most profound experiences that I've ever seen in my life because, because for once, I read about all these, these, these psychological disorders and all these mental health issues and now I'm thrown into this environment where I'm seeing bipolar, mag depressive, paranoid schizophrenics, I'm seeing everything that I study and rarely do we see that. We study about it but we don't get a chance to experience it, like there's no application. And it was too raw for me to be completely honest. Um, it was something where I respected the people who wanted to continue in that field because they needed help. I just wasn't the one. I just, I, there was no passion behind it. It was just a job. I didn't really want to do it anymore. I did that for three months. Then decided, you know what? Staying in shape in college, you know, in the back of my mind, really kind of motivated me to, to be a personal trainer. Uh, I didn't pursue it at first because my parents got pissed. <laughs> they were like, we didn't spend all that money for you to be a personal trainer. So, no. And so, went the safe route, tried psychology. It didn't work out. I said, well, I'm putting my own money towards personal training. So I got certified, um, took a, I guess I studied at home, I think it was through this, co this company called AFA, and took the test, started Bally's, worked there for about eight months, didn't know nothing at all. All I knew was what I read in that book, and showed up day one and just learned on the job. Um, but it was probably the funnest job that I've ever had in my entire life. There's music playing all day, you're wearing sweats. I mean, it's a very casual environment. And I was like, oh, okay, like this is cool. I'm glad, I, like, I'm glad I'm in this, I could see me doing this, right? But then that kind of wasn't really, wasn't super passionate about it, it was fun. I didn't see myself doing that for the rest of my life though. So after that, luckily an opportunity opened up to be an assistant basketball coach at my alma mater. So one of my coaches that I, you know, that, that coached me, put me on and I was a, a, a part-time teacher somewhere else. Then the next year, a full-time position opened up. I became a full-time PE teacher. Um, I became uh, an assistant bas varsity basketball coach. So I was responsible for the guards, the guard development. Um, and that's when I actually started to train my basketball players. I wasn't training them properly. I was doing bodybuilding type of stuff. Didn't know anything about sports performance. Didn't know anything about strength and conditioning. All I knew was that we were a school that was all about academics, not about athletics. I did not have athletic girls. It was an all-girls school. So I thought, let's just have me work them out to help them get into shape. Um, then from there, those pivotal moments in my life was when I went to a coach's clinic at Cal Berkeley. So I'm thinking, I like coaching basketball, I like teaching. Again, I don't think I'm going to do this forever, but if I'm going to be a basketball coach, I'm going to be the best coach I can be because my second year there, I became the head coach. So I go to a coach's clinic at Cal, and how it was set up is that we, we, uh, we sat in on the women's basketball practice. So we just watched them practice, and the coach would break down you know, different moments of practice and explain what they were doing. And to start, a strength and conditioning coach got the girls going. So I was watching them do dynamic warm-ups, I was watching agility drills, I was watching plyometrics, and honestly, before that, this is 2004, I had never seen anything like that. I didn't play college sports. All I knew about was personal training. I knew about benching, squatting, you know, rowing, pull-ups, pull that's, that's all I knew. So I'm seeing this and I'm mesmerized. I'm thinking, who's that? What are they doing? And that's what I want to do. And from that point on, that's when I kind of took a left and changed my path and realized I want to be, whatever he is, that's what I want to do. So I contacted the person who ran the clinic 